Yeah, just kidding. It's not Christmas, it's just an ATF whistleblower revealing all the fraud and waste in the ATF with taxpayers footing the bill. That's awesome! So either this is a huge possible gift to gun owners, or no one will do anything and we the people will still be held responsible and essentially have to continue paying for the unfounded bonuses. Kind of like that time at the holidays when your drunken Uncle Larry insulted your wife and then stole all your change out of the change jar. So kind of like Christmas? Yeah. Um, for some reason my brain decided that it just really needed to make that joke and then it stuck. I don't really know, but uh, sorry guys, I'll, I'll pack it up. This story first broke at CBS, of all places. Man, 2021 is full of surprises. The CBS article tells the story of Joe, who claims to have worked as an information specialist in the Human Resources Department over at the ATF starting in 2016. He claims that while there, he witnessed large-scale fraud, waste, and abuse that could potentially involve hundreds of millions of stolen tax dollars across multiple federal agencies. Which really isn't that surprising if you follow anything that the government does. The surprising part, at least to me, is that someone actually came forward with it and, of course, that a legacy media outlet is even reporting on it. But before we get into the details, this video is brought to you today by me. And I don't mean just the fact that I wrote, filmed, and edited it and came up with that really bad joke in the beginning. Oof. Instead, what I mean is that I've put together a new way to help support the channel and stay connected to the Liberty Doll community and me off of the Facebook, YouTube, Twitter grid by popular demand. And when I inevitably disappear off of those platforms for a month or two postpartum, because let's face it, I'm going to be a sleep deprived feeding machine and pacifier. You know what? I'm okay with that. The first part of that is the new channel memberships, which give you access to channel badges and exclusive emojis that I created myself. Right now, there are only a couple, but more are on the way. The second part is that it also brings you into the fold on our new exclusive Discord, where you get access to all of the perks normally reserved for Patreon and Subscribestar supporters, like video previews and behind the scenes content. So far, the Discord is a pretty chill place and also gets the exclusive emojis because honestly, I'm pretty proud of myself for making them and want folks to be able to use them. If you're a subscriber on my website, you also get this same access. Just send me an email at liberty at thelibertydoll.com to get you set up on the server. And if that's not your jam, the PayPal tip jar or a link, comment, and share work just as well to help the channel. So that is my little plug for the day. Back to the video. The recently revealed ATF fraud allegedly involves something called LEAP, or Law Enforcement Availability Pay, which is typically reserved for criminal investigators on call who are expected to work extra and unscheduled hours. But according to Joe, the bonus was also being given to people in administrative jobs even though they didn't actually qualify by federal law. The pay bump was a full 25%, meaning if someone was officially on the rolls for a $100,000 salary, they were actually getting $125,000 with LEAP. He said this was pretty widespread across admin jobs and he flagged it immediately and brought it to his supervisors. Unfortunately, according to emails obtained by CBS, those very same ATF supervisors became very upset with Joe for bringing attention to the violations and according to personnel records, his performance reviews suddenly and mysteriously went from fully successful to minimally successful. Then last year, those same ATF supervisors decided to move his performance to the unacceptable category and fired him last summer. 
Now, you could argue that this is just some poor schmuck mad that the ATF fired him for doing a shit job. But that doesn't appear to be the case. I say that because, one, I interned for the government, though at the state level in grad school, and let me tell you, it's pretty hard to get fired from the government even if you're not actually doing your job. In my one year with the state, I saw employees committing Medicare fraud, using company time to shop on eBay and purchase cruises, people who were nine months behind on medical reports that were required by law, sexual harassment, threats and intimidation, and even one clinician who was having inappropriate sexual contact with a client. Everyone knew about all of these instances, they were brought to management, and nothing happened. Seriously, if you did this in the private sector, you would probably be looking at a million dollar fine, or more, and the loss of your license at the very least. Two, it turns out that last year, the Office of Personnel Management, or OPM, actually ended up doing an audit and the Office of Special Counsel reports that there was, in fact, a substantial likelihood of wrongdoing. According to the investigation, at least 94 employees were incorrectly classified in order to receive LEAP benefits. So, you figure using even Joe's example of an extra $25,000, we're talking almost $2.4 million of your money illegally going to desk monkeys at the ATF per year. And you know what happened? The office suspended the ATF's ability to create certain jobs for six months due to prohibited personnel practices. That's it. N nothing else. As for the employees inappropriately collecting all that extra money, OPM hasn't said a word about what happened to them, so we have no idea if there was any disciplinary action. Joe alleges that the fraud and waste actually spans across four federal agencies, but which ones aren't mentioned in the CBS report. All four agencies also declined to comment for the report, and an email from the Office of Special Counsel claims that the final report of their findings is delayed due to its implications for the ATF. So, the ATF did something bad, was investigated, got a slap on the wrist, and the final results of that investigation are delayed and not being reported because it could hurt the ATF. Do, do, I, do I have that right? And because it's not being reported, not only do we not know what happened to those employees, but we also don't know the size and scope of this, how long it was going on, or the exact amount of money given to these employees. Administrative employees, as described on the ATF website, advise officials and employees on hiring procedures, employee benefits, ironic, retirement benefits, performance, and pay administration. Also ironic. They also conduct in-depth, complex, and integrated analyses and studies involving major program areas of the Bureau. So for shits and giggles, I clicked on their View Vacancies link and took a look at some of the HR jobs available under the Department of Justice, which is the umbrella that the ATF falls under. There, I found 30 job listings with starting base pays as low as $43,000 and as high as $144,000. So, if this $43,000 guy got leap, we're talking a bump of just under $11,000. But if it's the $144,000 guys getting leap, which, let's face it, was probably the case, we're talking an extra $36,000. That's a government salary All right, right there, yeah. yeah. And that's just using base pay numbers before locality boosts and before any promotions up the ladder. Some of these admin jobs pay almost $200,000 a year at the top. 
Our only hint at the true scope of this thing comes from a nonprofit and whistleblower organization called cleanupatf.org, which claimed 12 years ago that the ATF has reportedly given false testimony, concealed substantial waste, fraud, and abuse, abused their lawful authority, and waged systematic campaigns of reprisal against their own employees that dare to speak out. The website was created for former and current ATF employees to share information that could lead to accountability. But unfortunately, it appears to have last been active in 2019. You know what I think is especially ironic about this? The NRA did basically the same thing and is now falling apart under all of these lawsuits brought on by the New York Attorney General and various other parties involved. The only difference is the money was donated via memberships rather than stolen by taxes. But the ATF? Absolutely nothing. In the actual news broadcast of the report, the anchor made sure to point out that the ATF hasn't had a permanent director in six years, despite what she called skyrocketing crime. And we have uncovered allegations of fraud, waste, and abuse at the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, potentially involving hundreds of millions of your tax dollars. That agency has not had a permanent director for six years, even as violent crime has soared nationwide. As if this was an excuse for the fraud. Never mind that, until 2020, FBI stats said that crime was the lowest it ever has been since the 1970s. We don't let facts get in the way of journalism. Nevertheless, if this ever gets spoken of again, I'm sure this news anchor won't be the only one to suggest that this is why the ATF needs a permanent director. Meanwhile, the Biden administration says their goal is to double the ATF's budget over the next five years, at the same time that we have all these fraud allegations and that it was leaked that the ATF also has a new bizarre responsibility investigating claims of COVID relief fraud. Because, you know, ATF agents are well-trained in investigating financial crimes. But according to this whistleblower report, maybe they'll end up being really good at detecting fraud after all, as it takes one to know one. That's it for today's video. As always, thanks for tuning in, stay safe, and happy shooting.